I've been flying RC planes for a long time and there is one jet and one jet alone that I have flown more than any other airplane. Now I've been caught up doing a lot of reviews and I wanna kinda of start showing you guys what I actually fly. So if you ever see me doing a review in the background, you'll probably see this right here, FMS BAE Hawk 80 millimeter. Had this for a while, probably have over 100 flights on this thing. As you guys can see, it's pretty beat up, missing gear doors, missing gear door on the front. Fins are ripped off, drop tanks missing. I've done low passes, slammed the ground, sucked up debris, just kind of all crazy things that you probably shouldn't be doing with a jet. And this held up. Super durable landing gear, can fly this thing off of grass. This is just one of those jets that I bring out. I don't really care about the appearance of it, love. And when I tell you, I love the way it flies. Now this isn't my favorite jet of all time, but it is my favorite jet to fly. So as I said, I just kinda wanna start showing you guys more of what I fly when I come to the field. And this is one of them. Now, a lot of different reasons. We're gonna start right here. Main reason number one, battery compartment. Now, it's massive. It's, there's no way about it. Look, I, got, I actually got some ordinance in there. That's the, uh, the fueling probe or whatever it is. Oh, that's broken, we'll leave that in there. But you could hold a wide variety of batteries. So I ran 4,000 all the way up to this 6,200 milliamp and it carries all of them, no problem. Now it is a little heavier with this one, but I did land it on grass, no problem. Um, how I didn't break the landing gear yet is beyond me, but we'll probably do it on this flight. So let's get this battery in start this thing up and we'll get it in the air maybe you guys can start to see why i bring this to the field just about every time i go out to fly now as i said 80 millimeter in my opinion one of the best sounding size edfs there is we're going up gear up flaps up and that's it she is in the air now, as I said, guys, this is the one that I bring to the field. No matter what I'm flying, landing gear, front, stuck down. Let's get that coming back down, back up. It's stuck down. Why is it stuck down? I beat this thing up so bad. It might be time to retire this thing. And just try to bring it up inverted. Oh, and she went in. All right, cool. Now, originally, when this thing came out, I actually didn't want it, uh, which is kind of funny. It doesn't raise a lot of, you know, green flags for me on a sense of look. Like, the red color's cool, but the shape and everything, honestly, I didn't think it was going to fly as well as it did. A buddy of mine, George, he's like, hey, dude, like, did you ever think about getting the FMS BAE Hawk? I heard it's one of the best flying jets. And I was like, no, actually, it does nothing for me. I really don't want it. And he's like, dude, I would second, you know, circle back to that thought because I heard good things about it. So I got it, flew it, instantly fell in love with it. And yeah, I bring it all the time. But even still, I haven't shown much video of this because again, it just, it's not that exciting of a jet, but once you fly it, you really start to understand how great this thing is. Now let's do a full speed pass. You can listen to that motor. Oh, I missed it, can you do that again? Yeah, we'll do it back this way. Now, I want you guys to remember, if you end up getting one of these, yours is probably going to be a little bit faster because you're going to have those gear doors. I have a ton of drag on this right now. Now, you see pretty much how stable this thing is. There's no gyro in this. It is pretty windy out. It just flies so well. Now, I'm going to come down. We're going to stick jam. You ready? Just a sturdy, sturdy jet. Has a good presence in the air. I hope the camera's catching it. We got kind of a weird sky behind us. But um, yeah, man, every time I come out to the field, this thing is with me. Let's go, we're going full flaps. We'll do a nice slow pass. You can see kind of the flight envelope of it. Now I want you to remember, I got a 6200 in this. This thing is heavy right now. Leaving those flaps out, we're gonna do a slow circuit. A little high alpha with the flaps out. Oh, Staller. Let's do a low pass. See how low we can get this. Now, 
when I'm at the grass runway, which I'll show you a clip on the screen, I usually smack the runway when I do this. <laughs> he touched it. You know what? The wind, I'm going to do a speed pass this way, and we're going to do a slow pass into the wind. This thing is dialed, man. It really is the best. You know, this flies, which it amazes me, it flies better than Viper jets. Now, I have the Viper 70, and it's in pristine shape because I don't fly it that much. I bring this. Full flaps are out. Come a little closer. Oh, we touched. <laughs> You know, if I didn't touch, that would have been the nicest show pass. Let's do that again. Let's do it this way. Now, we're going to be a little faster this way because we're with the wind. Ooh, we're going to lose a wing on them weeds. Yeah, guys, I love this thing. I'll leave my rates and stuff on the, on the, uh, in the description in case you guys have one of these. And maybe yours isn't as dialed or you're considering getting one and you want to fly it the way mine's set up. Again, basic receiver in here, no AS3X, no, no uh, reflex, no nothing. But if you guys did add a gyro, be even more stable. Now, 80 millimeters are known to have that throaty sound. Absolutely love it. Let's keep that inverted. Bring her around. Oh, yeah. As you guys see, I'm comfortable with this one. It's because I fly it so much. Now, where's our timer at? Oh, we've been in the air four minutes and 40 seconds. Time goes fast when you're having fun. All right, let's get those flaps out. I'll bring the gear down last second. We'll get her in. No dogs in the runway? No. Beautiful. Gear coming down. She's in. Now guys, it's only landing that fast because of how heavy that battery is. If you put a lighter battery in, you'll be able to float it in a little easier. I was pretty much on the bottom end of that elevator input but um yeah just all around flies good now i do want to say so i said it i'll say it again my favorite flying jet it's not my favorite jet ever because i'm a big like scale i know this is a scale model but there's other scale jets that i prefer so i'm going to make a video about that too but this is my favorite jet to fly hands down the best it's just fun it's solid it's sturdy it's handles wind handles anything low passes i've smacked the ground so many times i haven't broke it i'm gonna make a video soon of my all-time favorite jet which i'm not even gonna give you a hint as to what that is you can stay tuned for that video and then there's another 80 millimeter and i'll say it again 80 millimeter in my opinion is the best sounding jet you know 90s are a little bit louder maybe but not as throaty 70s are definitely not as throaty as this um but this isn't the best sounding 80 millimeter so i'm gonna make another video of the best sounding 80 millimeter which is a great scale model so stay tuned for both of those they're going to be coming uh probably in the coming weeks but hey i got another battery for this so i'm going to put it in we'll get this in the air one more time i'm going to run another 6200 just because i like the flight time i was in the air for four minutes 45 seconds i don't have my battery gauge with me but i'm still probably above 3.8 volts a cell which is crazy for any of you guys that fly rc jets knows that at 80 millimeter literally sucks down juice now here check it out in here you can see running a basic ar620 so you guys that run spectrum know there is no gyro with this thing you can see there's no reflex in there just basic basic setup that's it man just one of them solid jets great flying planes so let's get this out and let's get another battery in we'll get it back in the air as you guys see on the screen i do have my remote i want you guys to kind of see what my hands do and we'll get it up so i got no flaps on for this takeoff Oh, I did have flaps. I didn't even realize. All right, wheels are coming in, flaps are coming off. We'll bring it around. 
Now, let me tell you, man, it feels good being out here. I live in Long Island, and it has been windy. We haven't been able to fly at all. That front landing gear is giving me a hard time. So here's, here's what we got to do to bring that in. I don't know why, but it's what we got to do. So the landing gear is down again. Bringing it around. We're going to go inverted, slow it down a little bit, bring that landing gear in, and now it's good. We'll come back around. If your landing gear ever gives you a problem coming in, always put that landing gear back down, go invert it, slow the plane down so there's less drag, and then do it again, and it should cycle in. A little trick that I learned from the guys at the club. So I got full flaps down right now. We're gonna do a nice little pass shot. Do we have dogs in the runway? Nope. No dogs in the runway. Always good to have a spotter. Now that was with the wind. Circle back, we'll do it into the wind again. Hey, maybe we could uh, touch the ground again. Now flying a bunch of planes is always a good time, but it's always fun and, and highly recommended to have one that you just kind of dial in, fly it the way you fly it, learn how to fly it. You know, this is what these guys with these giant turbine jets do. You know, they fly the same plane over and over and over again. And it's tough for us guys that do reviews because we're always flying different stuff. We might be flying a $20 plane from Timu, switching over to, you know, a $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 HSD jet to these, you know, four to $600 FMS Horizon Hobby planes. So again, when you guys see me coming to the field to do these reviews, you're always going to see this plane right here in the background. Well, as long as it's in one piece because I do do some pretty crazy stuff with it. But here, let me show you what my hands do. Let's do a nice big back loop. So power's on, right? Bring it in the speed until it's right in front of us. We're gonna start that big back loop right there, right? Once we're at the top of the loop, bring the power down, add some elevator, come out of it, and that's it, big back loop. Now, I'm gonna say it again, huge battery in here, but I do want you to see what my hands do while I'm inverted. So we're inverted and I need a lot of up because that big battery makes this thing a little bit nose heavy. Now when you're turning, you're gonna use mainly rudder, right? And add a lot more up on that input and bring it around. Level out the wings with your ailerons. And that's essentially how you fly inverted. So if I wanted to go the other way, I'd go the other way with the rudder. But you definitely want to use rudder when you're inverted. Now a lot of people fly and have a hard time flying rudder but it's one of the main things you need to learn. And one of, the, one of the reasons people have a hard time flying rudder is because you learn with a gyro. And that's okay, because I did the same thing. And um, you know, it's a habit that you need to break. Now I haven't done a touch and go because that landing gear gets stuck down, the front landing gear, but we're gonna do a touch and go now and I'll just go invert it to bring it back up. So we're coming in, we got a little bit of a crosswind coming from behind us. So I'm gonna need some right rudder. Do some power, letting it flow down, a little more power. Now you see that, I'm full elevator. Again, battery is heavy, guys. I got a lot of nose weight in this thing. Let's see if that gear goes in. Nope. I'm gonna leave it inverted and bring it around. This is one of those planes where like, you know, a lot of planes I'm ready to land. This one, I actually have to look at my timer and see where I'm at. Why is that stuck down, man? Come on. There it goes. Where are we at on the time? Minute and 26. So I got about a minute left, then I gotta bring this thing in for a land. I could probably get six minutes out of this, but I don't wanna risk it. I don't wanna have to dead stick this thing. I might beat it up even worse than it already is. So we're going full speed pass, nice and low. Ooh, that sound. Vertical performance is unmatched. These 80 millimeters just rip, dude. Oh boy. See the wind? That wind pushed it directly over our heads. I hope she got that. She's gonna yell at me later for the over the head pass. I'm gonna do another low speed pass with the wind and then we're bringing this thing in for a land. Power is coming on now. Go pass. All right, guys. Here we go. Full flaps. Landing gear is coming down. Silence for the land. 
one of those jets with a battery this heavy up front it's called flying it to the floor you're going to need lots of oh lots of throttle i'm full elevator right now hey she is in doom, doom, doom. dude Woo! i was close like i said my most flown jet, it's gonna continue to be my most flown jet. This is one of those things that I just enjoy it. I'm comfortable with it, beat it up. You've seen I touched the floor on one of those and I don't know, I haven't broke a servo yet, knock on wood. I haven't really broke anything. I did break my fuselage once, no fault to me. It was on top of my gas plane in my garage and I hit it with my attic ladder, fell off, broke this. This vertical stab is connected to the fuselage so I have to change the fuselage. That was probably 60 flights ago. Yeah, man. So anyway, hey, this is what I fly. Leave in the comments your most flown plane. I'm very curious to hear what you guys are bringing to the field to fly a lot. If you're interested in this, I did leave the link below. So make sure you guys check that out. As always, appreciate you watching. Until next time.